Okay, this is exactly like example one, except this time we're talking in radians. It may help you to actually work in degrees first. I don't know if that's going to help you or not. Uh, I would suggest, for instance, if I knew what pi over 12 was in rate in degrees, I think that would make my job a lot easier. So I'm talking 1 12th of 180 degrees, which is, this is 15 degrees. I'm saying the sine of 15 degrees. And that's going to be a lot easier for me to work with because if I think of this as 15 degrees, then I know that that's going to be maybe 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, right? So that's going to make it easier to set up something like this. Rather than work with fractions, I can say then the sine of 45 minus 30, which is pi over 4 minus pi over 6. And now I know if I wanted to check 1 fourth minus 1 sixth, I want to make sure I got the correct fractions. Math fraction. Yep, that's 1 12. Okay, so I'm good. And that's an easy way to start off these problems, to convert it. Think of it in degrees instead because it's easier to do the sum and the differences in degrees instead because fractions are just tougher to work with. All right, so if we can figure this out then, once we get to this point and we decide of what it's going to be, now we need to just go find the formula. It looks like a subtraction problem in this case. So, and u is going to be pi over 4, v is going to be pi over 6. So I'm going to write then, it looks like it's sine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6, minus cosine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 6. Now I'm actually thinking 45 and 30 the whole time because that's going to make it easier to do the next step. This is the sine of 45 degrees. That's the square root of 2 over 2. This is the cosine of 30 degrees. The cosine, cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. Minus the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6, the sine of 30 degrees, is 1 half. So the exact answer is going to be, this looks familiar from the last example, doesn't it? square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4. The square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. All right? So I guess maybe we shouldn't be surprised when square roots of 6 and square roots of 2 show up in their answer. Huh? We've done three examples and all of them have looked like this, haven't they? All right, let's do the same thing as for this problem here. That's a tangent formula, so this is a new one. We haven't done a tangent yet. It's 5 twelfths of pi. So I'm going to start off and say, all right, well, what is 5 twelfths of pi? What is that in degrees? Oh, it's 75 degrees. Well, that's going to be easier to work with then, because if I know that this is 75 degrees, then I know that it's really it's 30 plus 45 is what I'm working with, right? Pi over 6 and pi over 4. So this is the tangent of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. 1 sixth plus 1 fourth must be 5 twelfths. Now I need to go to my tangent formulas and I'm adding, excuse me, I'm adding, so it's going to be this formula here, tangent of 45 plus 30, or 30 plus 45. Here I go. So it's going to be tangent of the first one. Tangent of pi over 6 plus the tangent of 45. Oh, excuse me, not 45. Let's call it pi over 4. I'm thinking 45. That's all over. 1 minus the tangent of pi over 6 times the tangent of pi over 4. All right, so this is what I need to evaluate. Now, I need to go through and I need to figure out what the tangent of pi over 6 is. Well, uh, let's see, tangent of 30 is going to be then, got to think about this, 1 over the square root of 3. If you need to draw a triangle out, do it. Tangent of pi over 4 is just 1. Tangent of 45 degrees. On the bottom, I have 1 minus the tangent of pi over 6, once again, square root of 3 over 3. And the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. So now it's just a matter of simplifying this. Uh, I notice on the top, I have a numerator or denominator of 3, right? So if I wanted to combine these into one fraction, I would call this, you know, I'm going to replace this one, I'm going to replace it with 3 thirds, right? That means the top would become the square root of 3 plus 3 all over 3. Big fraction bar. The bottom would do the same thing. Instead of thinking this, because really the one, you know, there's no reason to have this one here. That can basically go away. 1 minus the square root of 3 over 3, I'm going to think of this as 3 thirds instead of 1. Because then I see the bottom becomes 3 minus the square root of 3 all over 3. 
Once I have two fractions, I can flip it and multiply. So my last step then is to say, well, I've got the square root of 3 plus 3 all over 3 times, and now I'm going to flip the denominator here. I'm going to multiply it. 3 over 3 minus the square root of 3. These 3's go away, and I'm left with the square root of 3 plus 3 over 3 minus the square root of 3. And there we go. There's the exact answer that I needed. If I want to check it one more time, we did this in a previous example, but if I want to check it, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, all right, mode. I'm going to go to radians now because that's what we're talking about. I'm going to say the tangent of quantity 5 pi divided by 12. I should get 3.732 if I do it all right. So let's go to 3 in parentheses plus 3 is this. Divide that by the square root of 3. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. 3 minus the square root of 3. I get the 3.732 that I was expecting.